Yeah, we're back. Yep. Our house. <laughs> that, <was funny. laughs> that intro. What no, was the original intro? It was pretty funny, wasn't it? It was. Oh, I loved it. We actually watched that. We did that in one take, that intro, with the two of us fighting over this, this, poor, this poor thing. And uh, I must say, I don't look very intelligent, but, you know, it's, you know, it's comedic. It's just, you know, in Afrikaans, they call it Hans Vors, which is like a jester, which is very funny. But anyway, apart from that, um, uh, we do, I don't know if this is a terribly sexy thing to talk about. It's a console part of it, but maybe you can explain uh, what we're discussing today and why the why uh, you did what you did with this particular piece of code. Yes, so uh, Swifty Core is, as I said, an entity component system that you can easily import into your project. And entity component system, so what it is, is it's a, it makes it, uh, it's a really nice system to ha be able to add, easily add entities and attach data well, to them. Well, before we carry on, maybe we will, we, you know, I can, I can read out exactly what it is. Yeah. And what was the reasons why you, you decided to make a video on, the, on this particular section of code? What were you struggling with before? Was there, was there a problem with it being too complex? Why did you pull it out? Uh, so Swifty, which is my main project and it's my ga 2D game engine, uh, it, it uses entity component system, but it was getting a bit out of hand, things were getting like messy, I did some, I cheated a bit, did some hacks, and to solve that... So there was complex? I could have just remade it in my project and yeah, it would have been fine, but I know the next week I'd probably add all those hacks back again. So I decided to prevent that and to make it more useful for future game engines of mine. So make it more agnostic. I could just port it to a package that I can't easily edit and add hacks to, but it will also be simple and small so I can easily add proper error handling, everything, and it will be really professional, which is nice. Okay, but, but what do you mean? How is it helping you pulling it out of your system? Because I know it won't suddenly break. It's test. I've tested this small portion. It's easy to test. So, so like, is it how many? Uh, how big is it? Seven hundred lines of code. Yeah, but it? that doesn't mean anything because it's probably mostly now. It's probably like eight hundred with all these uh, comments. And okay, stuff, so. great. So, okay, so first of all, um, I think we need to discuss what is this because I still don't really understand what an entity component system. Is. So. Uh, maybe we just pull out the web page, okay. find out what it is. Cause I Let's think you... do some uh, very light typing here. <laughs> I think you did. You did we voila. did pull up. We did a pull up. A, a you know particular. Maybe just go up. What is an ent entity component system? You know, uh, and so entity component system or ECS is an architectural pattern that is predominantly used in game development. So that that's a good sign. You're using the right system. I mean. Yeah, and yeah. it works incredibly well. It's really easy to maintain. Okay, great. Developers use mainly manage different game objects and properties. Um, I mean, so the entities are unique identifiers for game objects. Is that correct? Yes. So in this case, I'm using UUID for uh, to store entities. Okay, great. Um, components are data structures that hold key information about the different properties of the entity. Yep, you just make a new class, inherit from components, and you forced to add these because it's a protocol. You had to add an entity ID and an ID for the component. And you can add all the properties that the components might store. It's a tile map data. Okay, so this is quite interesting. I mean, uh, it does kind of make logical sense that you have pulled this out. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. Because I never need to change it. Okay, but it's not only that. There is a logical sense that you've taken this thing out and you've gone, oh, you know, I, it's just become too big. It's like this massive monolith. So you've created this almost micro, mini monolith, and you've been able to pull it out, make it into a package, and, and then, you know, kind of interact with it. So obviously, yeah. you know, so let's carry on here. I still, systems handle the processing and update of the state of the components. Yep, so you just do the same thing, inherit from system, and but now we have start and update functions. Okay. So this might be where you add a player controller, a UI button that can be dragged around, uh, chunk generators, anything. They do the same things that Unity's components would do. 
And I think what you mentioned earlier is that, you know, you've kind of, this is a total separate entity, excuse the pun, that could be used as a scaffolding or like a skeleton for other projects, for other people. They download yeah. this, they can use it. Is that something yeah, that could so be done? Yeah, so in all my future Swifty engines that use the entity component system, I'll inherit from Swifty Core, import Swifty Core. Like, let's say I have a goal of one day to make a ray traced voxel engine for Swifty. And That'd then you'd use cool. this pretty And cool. I just import Swifty Core and it would have all this preset code for me just out of just easily just there immediately so I can get progress done a lot faster. Okay, but great. So, I mean, uh, let's go, let's see example of an entity component system. I mean, uh, if you have, imagine a two game where the user controls the character motion, the character can move around and collect coins. In this case, we represent the character and the coins as entities. The characters will have the following components. Position, the X and Y coordinates of the character will be stored. Yeah, and it's already stored in the transform components in Swifty, so I'm already doing that. Okay, the velocity, the horizontal and vertical speed of the character will be stored. I haven't got physics yet, but I'll probably have its own component for physical-based stuff. Okay, Like cool. a rigid body or the colliders. Okay, uh, input the end user input for the controlling character movement will be stored. Yeah, that isn't a component or a system, but it's but you can yes, I do have that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, cool. And the appearance, the appearance of the character, such as the avatar of the image, yes, uh, will be stored. So the sprite shape component <coughs> stores the image. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, so I mean, we can go on on on. Let's just find out what the advantages of based on this web page, which we can actually, you know, we we can add it to to your description, just to, yeah, so people yeah. can do. When they download something like this, you can have a look at your code, you can critique it, you can bash it, you can come back to Jordan and say, hey, this was cool, this was not so cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the ECS, <clears throat> excuse me, helps in separating game objects and into uh, data logic. This helps developers to create, change, and reuse the components and systems independently. Yeah, I love that about ECS. It's just it just makes a lot less code you have to create because you okay. can all inherit from let's say ten systems can inherit from the same components. So I mean, uh, the you know they say this makes the whole development process more flexible and modular. Yeah, I suppose this is the whole point. I'm actually quite impressed that you pulled this out and you you came and you said, hey, you know, this is a logical part of the code. Let me pull it out. I'm struggling with it, and then be able to reuse that and you actually see that this is something you know yeah i think it's quite like complex this, I, it is very basic though the core entity component system has nothing to it particularly yeah. exciting yeah well it, it might be exciting um ecs was designed to keep performance in mind it can drastically improve your game performance by reducing memory usage it also increases the processor speed as it can handle multiple in, in parallel but i'm not sure that you have uh, I haven't that. played around with multi-threading yet. It just yeah, it seems some... like it might be a pain, and I'm just yeah, I've never really worked with multi-threading. So that's something yeah. you maybe you can look at in the future. But there's no yeah. hindrances. There's no stopping something like that with your entity. That's there something above no. or below that lower level. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think though there's anything stopping it. It's just complexity. Yeah. Added complexity to it. Okay, um, ECS components can be reused across multiple entities. This makes it easy to create new game objects and scenarios. And you don't have to write a single line of additional code. Yeah, that is really nice. So explain what... I can what... just uh, create an entity and append components and systems, as many as I want and any ones I want. And it'll just if, as long as i got the correct combination of components and systems, it'll all connect perfectly and work. Okay, so let's look at just, you know, you created this, this, this logical um, component and you've you made it into a, 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 a package, great. Yeah. And you want to use it in your existing game engine. I mean, you could pretty much do anything because it's agnostic. It's, it's not geared to a particular form like 2D, 3D, 4D. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this was the guy. I didn't even consider making it a package originally. But uh, I thought that it would be really nice to have a core that had no rendering functionality, nothing. It just it was just really nice to just port all the Swifty entity entity data into a separate package. Okay, cool. So let's look at the, the limitations. So Ooh. okay. 
uh, it has a steep, I mean, from your personal opinion, <clears throat> I'm not saying that you've done this totally correctly. I have. Okay, okay. I'm just saying that, um, you know, we believe that you are, um, that you've done this amazingly well. This ECS has a steep learning curve, mainly for those who are used to traditional object oriented programming languages. It is not one of the easiest frameworks to master. I mean, uh, pretty much, what did you think about that? It's basic. It's different to inheritance, but it's very easy, to be honest. I don't understand. So, I mean, what are they talking about the object oriented compared to what you, you've done? I here? guess they'd be talking about inheritance. Uh, I guess inheritance where you might inherit from, let's say, uh, let's say you have a sword, you might inherit from damage or something. I'm not sure the example, a good example for that. Uh, okay. So you, you're not saying there's a steep learning but curve. I think it's really And you found this simple and logical. <clears throat> okay, so you're saying that uh, there wasn't a big learning curve. Yeah. Okay, great. Very little. Um, due to the huge number of um, iterated components in ECS, it might often lead to complex code structures, making it difficult to debug and maintain the code. And the whole point is that... I think it makes it easier to debug. Easier to debug. So it depends on what... You can showcase what you've done. Uh, you've done a crazy debugging system in this, right? Well, I wouldn't say it's crazy, but it is quite good. It's I think because I've never done debugging before, but I think at this good. scale, obviously you've done debugging, but not at I'm this not scale. I'm not debugging, but uh, proper debugging, like proper error handling, checking everything, printing nice warnings with line numbers, everything. Okay. This is probably most advanced. So obviously you've done this in the past, but you've never done such a, a complete, um, you know. I've package. used fatal errors, but I'm trying to avoid using fatal errors, stuff like that. Okay. And I'll just print the warnings. And okay, carry on. so um, the ECS is designed to work well with a particular type of game logic. It may not be suitable for all types of games. Maybe, yes. What do they mean by that? Why wouldn't you use an event um, entity? Hmm, um, Sure, actually. I mean, I'm not thinking of everything though. Maybe there's some edge case that for the game that might not uh, be able to use entity component system efficiently. It doesn't make sense though, does it? Because I mean, you pretty I much. I can't really think of every, anything though, really, that wouldn't be able yeah. to use entity component system. Okay, so. Um... Joe, if you got any things that wouldn't work with entity component system, please write in the comments. I've no idea that. I can't think yeah, of any Yeah, it's interesting. Point. Okay, so maybe you can just. Um explain um, what's actually going on here, uh, what yeah. have you done, and how you've done it, and yeah, so based on the very code. very similar to, Swift, to normal Swifty's entity campaign system. It's pretty much copy-pasted code with improved, though. So we have the same game data. I've just renamed it, and it's the same. We pass in a scene, we pass in an entity ID, and it gives us an array of systems and array of components. And you're talking to me about, uh, what is it called? An array that doesn't have to... Oh, a dense array. Dense array, yes. And a dense array, array and a sparse array, yes. I mean, just, just basically just talking to you about how good is your code. Is it smelly code? It's such a funny term. You know, do you, do, is your classes small? Do they make sense? Are they logical? Uh, do you, does, do, you know, just, uh, do you, I mean, just... Generally? How, generally, how well have you developed this this system? I mean, apart from this monstrosity of four loops and if statements as a getter for this debug game data, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe you can explain that. It is quite pretty. Um, unless you're one of those people who don't like nested uh, four loops, then yeah. Okay, well, explain Sorry, some of the stuff that so you're doing. Uh, so I've always had problem debugging game data. When something goes wrong or I need to see the game current game state, uh, then I usually would have to print out game data and give me this terribly ugly dictionary that's, that's like packed into this weird commas and I'd have to write this whole So it's just difficult, code. it's just complex to read. Very least, hard so. to read. Yeah. But I made this really pretty <coughs> debug game data, which just debugs all the game data in this nice pretty format. Okay. And I can actually showcase that in my one of my test cases. Here so is. you've done, you've built a, a whole testing system. You use XCT test case. XC test, yes. Okay, that's great. So if we just run one of the tests and zero failure. And isn't it great where it brings up that prompt? It's such an amazing IDE here. Yeah? I mean, really I've cool, never actually. seen a, a better IDE. No, <coughs> no, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. 
The only thing that I think would be nice to add would be uh, make it allow you to add custom uh, custom syntax, not custom syntax, syntax, sorry, but custom color highlighting. So if you're making your own custom language, which I probably will eventually, which would be quite fun, then it can have proper syntax highlighting. Now, Visual Studio Code is quite nice in some cases. I hate the IDE, but it's quite nice you can just import components on this. Too. Well, I don't think it is an IDE. It's more of a rich text editor. Uh, not an IDE, but you can, there are components you can add, attach to it to make it an IDE. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. quite extendable. So it's let's quite nice. move on. Uh, Xcode's better overall. Yeah, I think. More, yeah, it's more integrated. But as you I see, think, yeah. we have the scene, we have an entity in it, and it has a component which is swiftly called tests.transform component. And it gives its ID as well. So it does in nice formats. Okay, and then if you fail, fails your test. Okay, I will try that in one second. But it's way better format than this. If we just print it out. Did you push a button? Ah, build yep. another test succeeded. This, I mean, <coughs> what does this mean? It's a bit confusing to read. Yeah, it doesn't terrible. really. It, yeah, it isn't great, especially for a beginner who's no idea exactly what this means, this mess of. IDs means. Well, if he, f if he actually sees that. And it's just so complicated. From imagine this one probably. object, it's okay, but imagine a hundred objects. Yeah. So, you so if we try a, a, this would cause an error. And now usually in Swifty, this would crash the entire program, but now... So it's more graceful, in other words. It's a lot more graceful, yes. So it's XE test finds out its problem, but don't worry about that. But that shows uh, test. So I'm loading a, a null scene. Uh, just a random ID which doesn't exist. And it's quite funny you say no, but I, I <coughs> excuse me, I, I mean, I'm always null. Yes, yes, I, I do do null in C sharp. Yeah. Like and in C sharp, it's in it, it freaks me out when you say no. I think, keep on thinking that you're saying it wrong. It's quite weird. Anyway, carry in on, Swift sorry. It's no, but in <coughs> it gives the time. And I love the color coding. It is cool. I was, I was trying to find that for like quite a yeah, quite a while. Yeah. But I found OS dots yeah. locking. Very cool. Okay, cool. Shall we show the, the file dot swift and then we show the function test add entity, which it is. The exact line it's just <coughs> the problem with the code, which is here. And calling add entity. And it shows this and the error is seen that ID does not exist, which is exactly what it is. Yeah, that's great. That does look much easier for the end user. And it's very easy to debug. And I know because I've been working on Swifty now with this new Swifty core. And it's been a, it's been quite painless recently. Yeah, it's really nice with these proper debugging instead of just crashing. And you've obviously up. got you've obviously got the test testing that you're using. Yeah, and now it's saying because obviously it's trying to add an entity which is null uh, in a null scene, it failed. It just returned null here and it doesn't crash the program, which I quite like. Yeah, that's that. That's that is very nice. important. I know in last episode I think I said quite like <coughs> fatal errors, but this is also quite nice. I think it's a bit yeah, and it's nice that you're growing and 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 you know. Well, I do still use fatal errors. Yeah, I think it's quite nice. It's okay, cool. cool. So. Um, but yeah, it fails because entity ID uh, should not be no, and it is because it tries to create it but failed. Okay, cool. Oh, if we remove that. Sure. Yeah, overall, the all the test cases pass, which is good. Even setting up with errors, everything. Yeah, works very well. How many particular test cases did you run on this? Um, you should uh, do a count on it. 11 tests. Okay, 11 tests. And how do you write your test? Just show us a quick writing so test. As you see here, it's just, it's very simple. It's just you make a function test, let's say wherever it is, and it throws something and throws and you write, yep. Woo. Throw it and you throw this code at it at some at the test and it runs this code and it has this really nice testing format which shows whether it's passed or failed. Nice. As long as you make an exit <coughs> test case in in class. Okay, good. That's cool. great. Yeah, and I see that you created a package. Um, I mean, so explain to us this package. How would you import this package? So obviously you for future and other people can just pull this package in. Yeah, it's very simple. GitHub, GitLab, what? GitLab, what GitLab. I'll give the link in the description and and I'll show a full uh, video uh, eventually, soonish, very soon, on how to use it, how to use Swifty Core into your game engine. I think it'd be project. quite interesting for people just to see how you did this and yeah. how you pulled it out of your game. Yeah. and how you construct it into a logical part. So overall, it was quite easy, even though the Swifty is, is not big, but 
it's complicated, but it's quite easy to import into my Swifty project. So you've you've taken this art, you've separated art, and you've and you're reattaching it. How how are you reattaching it back? Is it is it painless? It's quite painless to just replace when usually it's core. Uh, it's just very simple though. Uh, I. It's a bit complicated in details because I'll do a video eventually okay, on great. how to use it. But so, so, I mean, that's obviously but, what but people need to understand. I also have a full scene system, which is quite <coughs> nice, a nice scene system. And also, when printing an error, so as you see, you may notice this So, this is still tile. Swifty Core you're talking about now? Yeah, Swifty Core. But it also has a scene system. Because so, what do you mean by a scene system? What do you mean by that? Well, it's quite obvious. Scenes. Yeah. It has so scenes each so you can load scenes. Scene. We have yeah. a current scene that you can load, and you just go load scene or create scene. Okay, cool. And it loads this scene. And you can even pass in a new scene ID if you need a custom scene ID for some weird reason. I'm not sure why you'd need that, but maybe you need to overwrite a scene or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, you just put it in there for... Yeah, it might be useful. I'm not useful, sure. yeah, great, and so that's great. Forward thinking, it's Better important. than having to redesign the scene manager for yourself. <coughs> Yeah. Joe, sure, we have really nice uh, uh, debugging. Uh, not debugging, oh, sorry. Uh, documentation, yes. Ah, show sure, us the docs. So if we just go, let's say, destroy entity. Hold I mean, out. people could get a job just writing documentation. That's how. Do you know, the, the, the most critical part is documenting. I mean, yeah. people don't realize they build these games, they build these things, and no, and, one, knows and no one knows how to use them. But not only that, no one documents. It's the worst it's the worst nightmare for developers. I mean, you get these huge monoliths or you get even worse, you get microservices, hundreds of microservices, and you've had like one guy develop the whole thing and he's left the company and, and the, someone else comes into the company and looks at this, this code and goes, oh my God. But you the know? problem is, I think <laughs> the reason why it's, you don't usually add docs while developing, at least I don't, is because it's a bit messy. Yeah. Docs, they add quite a few extra lines to your code. They make it bigger. It's a bit I think people are just lazy. I mean, I mean obviously that. that but, but I mean, people can yeah. get a, just a job just documenting pe yeah, other people's sure. code. If you're a really great developer and you can just look at someone's code and go, okay, I can, I can document this. Or AI. AI can do things yeah, like this. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool. I mean, AI can really do that. Yeah. Really can put it in, please write docs comments. for me and write comments and, and stuff like that. Anyway, so, so explain what you've done here. So yeah, we have, uh, this is all auto-generated, which is insanely cool. So I, the only thing that, that isn't auto-generated by Xcode for all this documentation is these little comments I've added here to each parameter. And you can actually do something in code to, you can right click in code on your classes and stuff. Yes, yes. So if we go, if we hover over, say, add entity, it shows it shows the documentation. Creates a new entity, it shows how you do it. And I, and I remember you saying, hey, you know, I created my own um, custom. Uh, Where was that again? Custom. Uh, entity code block. Um, entity code block. Yeah, you you built a you you did something custom which you you right clicked on, almost like Jeff. You did something like that, oh. but not not Jeff. What did you do there? Oh, like uh, oh, kind of like the code snippets. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I believe it's Command Shift L. Is that correct? Yes. You get all these code snippets, and we get all this. Cool snippets. This is what Xcode. This is the default Xcode stuff. But you but created I've also made your my own. own. Yes. So we have a system. We have a rendering system. Basic stuff for myself to quickly add components and yeah. and then a fun one for Jeff. Yeah. And who is Jeff? No, but we renamed Jeff. So so Maybe? I think yeah here, here oh, is yes yes, yes. yes. sorry I your forgot. brain your narrow your tunnel vision. I here. totally forgot. We renamed Jeff. Did yeah. Okay. Jeff? So basically, what we did is. Um, I thought of a cool idea. Whenever I look at something, I say, hey man, how can we improve this? I mean, I look at something like this object and I say, how can we improve this? How can we, how, how can it be better? So I thought to myself, you know, Swifty Engine, and then we checked, we sat down and we said, ah, you know, we need a mascot. We need yeah. something fun. We need something that is just ob. And what do we do every day that is like a pet that we, we enjoy? And it's this. Ta-da! 
smell. Oh, I don't that's know. amazing. Mm. It's our sourdough starter. I know it sounds freaking insane, but we are insane people. Now, the sourdough starter is like a pet in a way. You feed it every day and it's, it's almost like it's got a soul and it's ancient. And I thought to myself, this is a cool expression. And I think it came to me, the Japanese. What, if you go up here and you click on, on that particular, you know, this concept of Shinto. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, it's, you know, the religious, the religion Japanese of J things. Japanese. But basically, let's see the, um, let's talk about it. What do they say? Um, uh, Shinto is indigenous religion of Japan, which holds that the world is inhabited by countless spirits or deities called kami. Kami are not only gods in the conventional sense, but can also be spirits associated with natural elements like mountains, rivers, trees, rocks, and even man-made objects. So the Shinto, no, or no, the no. Kami, I sorry. I think the, it's animism or, animism or something. It's yeah, believed that but, all things, animal, plants, inanimate objects, and yeah, natural phenomena the, the, are the spirits or soul. That's yes, but it. even man-made objects. So the spirits of this, we need a spirit. We need something that inhabits... Um, you know, Swifty. So I thought to myself, wow, why don't we create uh, a, a, you know, just a mascot called Swifty. Yeah. And it's based on our sourdough starter. And it sounds so crazy, doesn't it? So it's really yeah. cool. So we, we went to AI and we, we got found the mascot. It took us like literally four minutes. Yeah, right? Gemini is amazing with your AI generation. Yeah, AI generation, Gemini, they got Which that right. Mm -hmm. I know they didn't get the, the other stuff right, but they got that Not right. Go there. We won't go there. So let's, let's get a picture of our mascot. Okay. Based on our sourdough starter. So at least, weird. you know, we will... Yeah, there's Swifty. So we got Swifty. We had to do a little... Uh, oh, cute. We had to do some initial stuff like that, you know, just... Yeah. This was the original Ed generator, and we asked it to put it in this, in this cute cartoon style. Yeah, that's very this cool. This looks very good, though. I mean, yeah, no, it looks wow. very cool. No, it's excellent. But basically, this is it. I don't know if you can look inside it. It's pretty disgusting. But there it is. There uh, is. There it is used Swifty. to be called Jeff, but we now renamed it to, to Swifty. And that is it. I mean, I mean, Swifty is Swift. I mean, sometimes what happens. In, in the evening is that Swift, Swifty gets, I'm sorry, Jeff. Swifty gets like a little bit excited. He gets really swift and he like almost expands, explodes out sometimes. I don't get it right, you know. There's too much protein. There's too many sugars in, in, the, in it. And it just like when I bake bread and it literally explodes, I come back the next morning and it's like, overflowed so that's what so that's what the whole point is to cut it short this is swifty hooray and now we yeah. have it we have an entity now we cannot screw up this game engine yeah because um it's it's, decided, it's it's got a soul yeah i've decided to make swifty more of a series of game engines than a game engine because it, it'd be a pity to lose his mascot if I'm making that voxel ray trace engine eventually. Yeah, because, yeah. So it's or more. Or a 3D engine or another 2D engine, anything. So it'd just be under the banner of Swifty all the yeah, time. Yeah, it will be Swifty. Okay, cool. That's and, awesome. and I have a nice Git image now, GitLab uh, preview image for my project. Okay, cool. That's great. Is there anything else that I think that's pretty interesting? I'm. I'm you yeah. know, it's not, as I said earlier, I don't think it's as sexy as it, but it's very important. It's a console application. It's not that exciting, but you can make it very exciting. Yeah. Rendering everything, which is what Swifty, uh, the, pro the game engine Swifty is doing. Yeah, I think we did some interesting stuff. We did that nice intro, so that's new. We did yeah, the, just added the a, mascot, yeah, which is pretty cool. In Swifty, I've just added this very cool uh, little component called the tag component. Literally okay, that's at cool. this point, half, uh, probably 35 minutes ago at this point. Okay, so what is this uh, tag? But the, I'm currently adding a nice system for, to have a main camera with Swifty Core. And instead of how I can loop through all the objects now and check if they have a tag component. If they do, and if they have the main camera co uh, component uh, tag, and they have a camera component, uh, then, they are, then they use that camera to render as a... Uh, to get the V matrices and stuff okay, like that. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so the next video, 
Um, you know, I think you got sidelined big time from this because it was a little complex for you, you struggling with stuff. But what's yeah. the next video we're going to do? Some heavy UI stuff, maybe Ooh, some physics, yes. seriously physics. Maybe, maybe we can integrate that C++. Um, yeah, either that or I make my own physics library. I mean, we go... might be better actually to make my own physics because I found a great course on how to do that. I mean, that could be quite cool. Yeah, okay. That's up to you. But if there's something existing... Why not use it? But anyway, nah. let's let's arm wrestle over that some other time. Yes. But um, that's cool. So, yeah. awesome. Oh, well, I guess there's nothing uh, else to show, really. So, I guess I'll see you next uh, video. Hopefully, I'll either be doing the Swifty or I'll be showing you how to use Swifty Call. Okay, cool. I probably no. should do Swifty Call one uh, yeah. though, first. Okay, cool. Cheers. Bye.